Hey guys, this is Vanessa with Babes in Bookland, and this week I'm going to be doing a really short mini haul. Uh, the first book I received was from Prometheus Books, and I got this in the mail about a week ago. It's called um, Fair Coin, and it's by E.C. Myers. Now, this book um, is already in bookstores, and um, but it's about, from what it says inside, um, 16-year-old Ephraim Scott is horrified when he comes home from school and finds his mother unconscious at the kitchen table, clutching a bottle of pills. The reason for her suicide attempt is even more disturbing. She thought she identified Ephraim's body at the hospital that day. Among his dead devil's belongings, Ephraim finds a strange coin, a coin that grants wishes when he flips it. With the flick of his thumb, he can turn his alcoholic mother into a model parent and catch the eye of the girl he's liked since second grade. But the coin doesn't always change things for the better. A bad flip can destroy other people's lives as easily as it rebuilds his own. The coin could give Ephraim everything he has ever wanted if he learns to control his power before his luck runs out. Um, it was really interesting. I wasn't expecting this book in the mail. Usually I get a um, an ARC copy of the book before I actually, and then they end up sending me the um, final copy. So I was actually excited. I actually just got the final copy and um, hopefully, you know, um, I'll enjoy it because I'm definitely going to read it. I love reading books with like a paranormal kind of twist and the main character is a boy, which, you know, most of the most of the books I've read, the, fem the main character is a female, strong kind of character of some sort. So I'm excited to get into a guy's mind, sort of. So this shall be interesting. Uh, the next two books I actually purchased at Barnes & Noble a couple days apart from each other. I read one, and then I had to go get the other one because I just, I always have to constantly be reading something. So the first book I'm going to share is... The second book in the Unearthly series, which if you haven't seen the first one, it looks like this one. It's purple. This one, um, I don't know if you can tell from the glare, but it's blue. And they both have really uh, pretty covers. Um, but anyways, this is the second one in a trilogy called Unearthly, and it's by uh, Cynthia Hand. And um, it's about angels, which, you know, I'll read a little synapse about this. So um, anyways... For months, Clara Gardner trained to face the fire from her visions, but she wasn't prepared for the choice she had to make that day. In the aftermath, she discovered that nothing about being part angel is as straightforward as she thought. Now torn between her two, her love for Tucker and her complicated feelings for the roles of she and Christian seem destined to play in a world that is both dangerous and beautiful. Clara struggles with a shocking revelation. Someone she loves will die in a matter of months. With her future uncertain, the only thing Claire knows for sure is that the fire was just the beginning. So this is the sequel. One more after this, which is so agonizing because the next one comes out in January and I've already read this. I'm going to be putting my review of this one in my own personal vlog channel. But anyways, um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, you guys should definitely pick this up. The series is great. I actually originally picked this first book up because... Um, it's dealing with angels, and actually the novel I'm currently writing is dealing with half-angel aspects. And though our books are, my book is completely different, at least in the mythology of the situation that's going on in, in Cynthia Hand's books, it's still kind of nice to see diff people's different views and different choices when, you know, writing their own story. So I really enjoy this one. This author's a great writer, and uh, pick it up. And lastly, uh, this is called Tempest, and it's by Julie Cross, and I'm right now about 30 pages in, so, so far so good, it's really good. The main character's a boy, so that was actually a different um, twist. I What made me pick this book up is really just the cover. It's really interesting. It actually kind of looks like um, the, what is it, the... Um, other angel series that I'm reading. It's called, um, you know, the Crescendo and the, um, which I'll go grab it real quick. Uh, Hush Hush, which if you're looking at this, it's kind of, I don't know, I, even though his back is like kind of bent back a little bit, this one 
this guy's kind of flipped the opposite way, falling down. I don't know. I think it's the same model. I keep staring at the both of them. I think they're the same, but they're not. Um, but anyways, this has nothing to do with angels, by the way. Um, but let me read you what it says. The year is 2009. 19-year-old Jackson Meyer is a normal guy. He's in college, has a girlfriend. He can travel back through time, but it's not like the movies. Nothing changes in the present after he jumps. There's no space-time continuum issues or broken flux capacitors. It's just harmless fun. That is, until the day strangers burst in on Jackson and his girlfriend Holly. During a struggle with Jackson, Holly is fatally shot. In his panic, Jackson accidentally jumps back two years to 2007. But this is not like his previous time jumps. Now he's stuck in 2007 and can't get back into the future. Desperate to somehow return to 2009 to save Holly, but unable to return to his rightful year. Jackson settles into 2007, learns that he can, he can about his abilities, and meets Holly for the first time again. Soon he discovers that nothing about his life is what it appears to be, including his own father. But it's not like long before the people who shot Holly in 2009 come looking for Jackson in the past. And these enemies of time will stop at nothing to recruit the powerful young time traveler, recruit, recruit or kill him. So anyways, this is good so far. Um, again, only 30 pages in, so time will only tell. Anyways. That's it for my little mini book haul. Um, I do want to bestow one piece of writing advice. It's not really writing advice. It's more of a quote I came across today. Um, I just think it's a little appropriate. So for all you writers that are out there who get, you know, mad and upset when you can't come up with the right words, there's always one, one worse, um, greater, a uh, one worse painful feeling than just not being able to um, simply just come up with something for your book and this um, quote is from Maya Angelou and it says there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you so you know whenever you feel like all lost is all lost is all, la, 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 all hope is lost it could always be worse you cannot be putting down that story that's like brewing in your head down on paper because that's always the worst feeling, at least from my perspective as a writer. And lastly, if you are looking at your calendars now, we are, guys, 11 days, 11 days from seeing The Hunger Games in the movie theater, which I've already bought my tickets. My friends and I are going to go see it on opening day, not at midnight, but on opening day. So really excited. Be watching now. I'm probably going to be posting the same video on this channel and my personal channel. My um, probably like a comparison between the book and the movie. And obviously a book will never be like the movie. There's always going to be changes. But sometimes, you know, when they're way off base, it angers me. So I'm going to be discussing you know, how well the movie did, how the actors portrayed the characters, and to see if they were successful, which, from based off the trailers so far, I think I'm going to be happy with how it turns out. So anyways, be watching out for that, and I hope you guys have a fantastic reading week, or writing week, or whichever kind of week. So anyways, bye!